And he also experienced this, this terrible thing of, of uh, the, uh, the diminished integrity of his daughters. That Lot's daughters assumed that, that they were the only survivors and they actually had to have sexual relations with their father so to, from their point of view so that the lineage, so that the family line would continue. There was no asking God. There was no prayer involved. There was this great assumption. And so, so uh, terrible, I guess, was the, the standard in Sodom that it had influenced his daughters in this way. I've written down there that their willingness to do so demonstrated the, depra- the depravity of Sodom and GIGO, which is an acronym for garbage in, garbage out. If we fill ourselves with garbage, we'll produce nothing but garbage in our lives. And if we feed ourselves with that which is not pleasing to God, that our actions will not be pleasing to God. So, Lot lost out. He experienced this terrible catastrophe. He ended up a man with literally nothing, deprived in terms of his possessions and deprived emotionally. We imagine the emotional cost of this must have been on Lot as well to go through this whole experience. So what is the point of all this? We want to ask ourselves, what sort of legacy will we leave behind? What sort of legacy will I leave behind? What sort of legacy will you leave behind? When you go to be with the Lord, what will it, what will it be that people will remember about you? And will there be any anything in, it, uh, in terms of eternity that will have been a, as a result of you? Will there be any people in heaven as a result of your witness and your ministry? As Christians, we can either live for ourselves, we can live for our possessions, we can lose them, as Lot did. We can lose out big time. Or we can live for the Lord and put Him first, thus making an impact that will quite literally last for eternity. And this is the wonderful promise that God has given us, that we can actually make a difference for eternity, that will last for eternity. We see the world slaving away in their jobs, in their careers, putting so much time and effort into that which will pass away. Now all of us need to work, we need to live, but the focus is so much on that which will pass away. But we as Christians have been given the privilege to be able to do something that will make an impact, not just now, not for a few minutes, not for a few short years, but for eternity. And that will be remembered for eternity. We have that power and that privilege and that position to be be able to do this. And I want to ask myself now and I want to ask all of you people, what is it that we're living for? Is our life sowing unto eternity? Look at this verse here. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I just pray that all of us would be storing up treasures in heaven. And that given an opportunity between storing up a treasure on earth and a treasure in heaven, that we will always take the heavenly treasure. That we would prioritize this storing up of heavenly treasures, that we would go out and it was so encouraging today to see Noel and Charles go out again with the tracks in this world which needs the Lord Jesus Christ and we know that if we do something for the Lord with a pure heart, with a genuine heart, it will not go in vain and it will not go to waste so really we have this wonderful opportunity I just pray that the legacy we leave behind will be something much greater than Lot's legacy that we will leave behind blessing to everyone we see, everyone we meet, that there will be people in heaven because of us, and that uh, as a result of our living, God will be pleased most of all. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, once again for this opportunity today to dwell upon your word. Thank you for this character of life, we, as we look at his life, are reminded that 
living for the world and living for that which will pass away will, will amount to nothing. It's all about the decisions we make, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we would make that decision to honour you, that you would be our first priority, our first love, Lord. Lord Jesus, that we would use the talents and the gifts and the opportunities and the time and the money you've given us, Lord, for your glory. That not one bit of it would go to waste, Lord. Lord, please, let us learn from this situation. Lord, it is not so hard to get into a pattern of neglecting you. Not one of us here is exempt, Lord. Not one of us here is guaranteed that we'll always love you first. Lord, please, we ask for your help in this matter. We ask that you would help us to discern that which is from you and that which is, that which is uh, shameful to you, Lord. So, Lord, everything we do, wherever we go, whoever we meet, Lord, we pray that we would be a blessing, Lord. We pray that every decision made would be a decision that glorifies you. And, Lord, we pray that when it comes time to be with you, you will thank us as your faithful servants, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this meeting, Lord, and everything you've blessed us with. We give you all glory in Jesus' name. Amen.